All right, so remember, our goal is to find an expression for the speed of the skydiver uh, as a function of time. Uh, right now, the best we've got is we've got uh, an expression uh, for we can figure out the speed of the skydiver either as, as a function of the, the force of air resistance, uh, which is not, not quite where we want to be. Uh, and so let's see if we can, uh, you know, starting with this, uh, you know, uh, nugget of an equation, uh, figure out a way to get that uh, in terms of time. Uh, we know force uh, is related to acceleration. And of course, acceleration uh, is related to both uh, velocity and time. Uh, and so we should, we should be able to use uh, that relationship. If we can somehow figure out what's going on with the acceleration, um, we can use that to incorporate time into our expression. So to do that, um, if we think about our problem uh, generally, uh, so our skydiver, uh, you know, is always going to have a downwards force of gravity, uh, which is equal to mg, uh, and then depending on how fast they're going, uh, as they fall downwards, uh, they'll have this upwards force of air resistance, uh, which is equal to bv. Uh, that means that their net force. Uh, will be equal to uh, Fg minus Far, so the force of gravity minus the force of air resistance, uh, which is Mg uh, minus Bv. Um, and of course, if we are at uh, terminal speed or terminal velocity, uh, then the force of air resistance is equal to the force of gravity, and so we get the net force is zero, the acceleration is zero, and we're at, and we're at terminal speed. Um, when we are uh, initially jumping out of the airplane, our speed is zero, so there shouldn't be any air resistance, uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, your speed is initially, uh, zero, uh, and so the, uh, uh, the net force just becomes, you know, Fg, uh, Mg, which is uh, what we would expect for an object in free fall. And so that, that, seems, that seems reasonable. Um, and we said we want to somehow uh, get this uh, connected to acceleration. So, of course, we also know uh, that net force uh, is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Uh, and so uh, we have this relationship. These two things have to be equal to each other. So we have uh, MA uh, equals MG minus BV. Uh, and so maybe we'll just solve this for uh, acceleration. So the acceleration is equal to uh, MG minus BV over M. So that's going to be G minus BV over M. Uh, and this... Uh, has has a little bit of promise. Uh, remember, we want to come up with an expression eventually uh, that is an uh, expression for speed as a function of time. Uh, we've got speed in here, a bunch of constants, so the mass is going to be constant, g is constant, b is going to be a constant. Uh, so we've got two variables, uh, except instead of being uh, speed and force, now it's speed and acceleration. That's good because acceleration uh, is connected to time. Uh, because, of course, acceleration is the derivative of the velocity uh, with respect to time. Uh, so we know uh, that acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to the time. Uh, and that relationship uh, does require us uh, to using the vector uh, forms to be the cleanest. Otherwise, like you have like, the, I don't know, like the absolute value of the acceleration is equal to the absolute value of the derivative of the speed with respect to time. And like, I want to deal with absolute values like this. No. no. Uh, so uh, let's, let's use this relationship. Um, we are going to, uh, th so this will incorporate time. Uh, and we can say, actually, if we replace acceleration with this, we just have speed and time are only two variables, and that's, and that's exactly what we want. Uh, the only issue is that we've written this here as an expression for the magnitude of the acceleration. Uh, and we just got to make sure that we can actually, um, you know, if we use the vector version of acceleration and the, and the vector version of velocity, that this equation still works. Uh, and so there are two potential interpretations. Um, if, 
Uh, so in this case, uh, if we want our acceler, so right now our acceleration is going to be a positive value. Uh, and, and we know uh, that the object's going to be accelerating downwards, right? Because the net force is down, uh, and so the acceleration is down. And so this sure looks like it is already set up, uh, assuming that uh, downwards is positive. Um, so, like, if downwards is forward, uh, then, you know, uh, then our acceleration, even as a vector, would be positive. And so if uh, we get this to give a positive acceleration, hopefully this will work. Uh, and so let's see. Uh, So uh, if uh, we assume that downwards is positive, uh, then the uh, acceleration would be equal to uh, g minus b times the velocity uh, over the mass. So does that work? Um, so here we... Yeah, so uh, here, uh, mg, uh, that's going to be in the, the positive. Uh, you know, that's, that's downwards, right? So mg is downwards, so this should be positive. Uh, so g winds up being positive, and so that works out. Uh, and then uh, minus bv, that's supposed to be uh, upwards. Uh, and if velocity being downwards is negative, uh, so, you know, this... this uh, minus BV is indicating that uh, the force of air resistance is going to be upward. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so if our, if our uh, velocity is downwards, uh, and that's going to be positive, uh, then if we subtract the positive value, uh, this is then going to be in the, the negative direction, which is upwards, which is, which is what we would want. Uh, and so this, this works out. Um, if, on the other hand, though, uh, we want downwards to be negative. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit uglier. Um, so uh, we want the acceleration to be 